Thank you and a very good morning. Uh, I'm really happy because this entire event sits very close to my heart. Uh, it's actually the third report that we have launched uh, along with E4M. And why is it so special and exclusive for us? Because I feel that while programmatic had been evolving, but we could never see a report dedicatedly uh, delivered only for programmatic. It was always just a section within digital. And with the help of E4M, we have, we have been able to do that. And if you really follow back to our first previous, uh, previous version of the programmatic report, it had covered the basics in terms of how programmatic fundamentals work and how will that really look out in shape for. Our second uh, edition had been talking about the trends for 2023. And if you really map it back to the report, they have really followed through. And when we talk about our third edition, which is what I'm going to talk about today, uh, so on the screen, can I please have entire programmatic report summary and the content page? Yeah. So I'm sure this report will reach out to you very soon and shortly. This report has four components primarily. The first one is recap that really talks about the shift in programmatic, how it had been working, especially post-pandemic. Because before pandemic, programmatic still, of course, was important, but was holding a share in terms of whether it's for branding or for performance. But post-pandemic, we could always see that how programmatic has taken over the stage and bringing solutions for every outcome-driven approach that a client is seeking for. Of course, we could also see that how programmatic advertising is working as per different category. So there's no standard approach for a single category, a category as well. Even within automotive, you'll see that a particular luxury brand is using a very different approach versus a second mass brand which could be there. Second section talks about that how the world is getting very unpredictable. If you have already observed, especially in past two years, that uh, whatever approach we had been discussing, whatever new partnerships, technologies we discuss and kind of curate for, and we have to really up our game again next year because some changes happen, right? Uh, it could be a, uh, maybe post a pandemic effect that every brand is looking for a ROI driven approach, be it branding campaign or a performance campaign. Or we can also talk about the fact that maybe we have become so technology driven now that everyone wants to work in that, in that same direction. And I don't see, really see that uh, day, we are not really far ahead from that day where everything will really very soon become digital. And I don't call digital and programmatic very different as of today. Uh, entire digital is slowly becoming very much programmatic, be it a search practice, SEO practice, or even a media practice. And of course, programmatic cropped from a media practice only. Third one, which is very important, uh, a pillar, which is revolutionary waves in programmatic, talks in terms of how the changes had been driven in terms of execution of programmatic, or how strategies will be developed or are being developed, especially working around a cookie less and a first party data, so I'm just going to talk about it also. Omni-channel integration and how automation is driving a lot of efficiency. And the fourth one is more to do with also trends, but to see that how uh, media is maturing across the channels. The four primary media channels which we're seeing uh, moving towards a high maturity curve are video, audio commerce, followed by PDOH. So to, uh, let's begin with unpredictable future. Uh, what do we really mean by that and how are we calling it an unpredictable future? So if we talk about 2023, how we had started uh, the landscape, clearly advertisers had understood how digital uh, plays a very important role for them. Even FMCG category, where they had been investing heavy monies on TV and traditional media, started incorporating digital in a very uh, integrated manner, understanding that it drives a lot of incremental reach for them, efficiency for them, and a lot of upscaling and upscaling of education also happened at the same time. But in 2023, we could see that it's not just video, but world move beyond. We can see a lot many partners coming into picture. If we talk about India as a market, connected TV has really uh, leveled up way too much beyond our expectation. And we could also see a lot of consolidation happening within OTT environment. Recently, um, we heard a news about, and not, it's not a news anymore, we got to know about a campaign of sports, which went live programmatically where all leading partners had joined hands together, DSP partner, SSP partner, inventory partners, and even creative partners for that matter. Now, we could never imagine sports coming on a programmatic, right? Because two years ago, we were really talking about that, why do I buy my OTT also programmatically when I can buy the same thing at a lesser, maybe uh, in a lesser time span activation direct, with a direct RO. And within one year, we can see a lot of fast pacing, fast, fast paced environment and sports activity going live programmatically. 
Also, within same, we can see now proper programmatic divisions being segregated across channels. Such a high focus is being developed and put there. We can see a lot many DSP partners also bringing up with a lot many uh, algorithm-driven frameworks where it's not just about activation of audiences, but how your particular objective or goal can be achieved. So when we talk about this world to be very unpredictable for us, yes, that's the reality because uh, no matter how much prepared we think that we are, but the way programmatic is moving, it's becoming more technology driven. So our strategies, our audience indexing, our way of thinking, targeting audience, measurement, it's not really just human driven and not completely uh, automation driven. So the world where we are uh, actually entering, I call it an amplified world, which is amplified intelligence, which is a human intelligence and human experience combined together with the artificial intelligence, automation is what you can call it, and how that becomes an amplified intelligent world for us. So that's what we call it a, a unpredictable world, but of course we have answers for that. And what really lies there is a, a re revolutionary wave which is coming in programmatic. Three pillars around that is definitely we have been hearing about this, which is a cookie-less world. How will that look like? Uh, it has been sorted to quite a much length of an advance, and we understand that it also revolves around first-party data activation. And we could see in 2023 that all brands are moving towards that journey. They're putting heavy focus on collecting first-party data, along with taking care of all the privacy norms which are there being followed uh, within our country. And as you know that laws are being formed in India as well, so brands are working very much in tandem to these norms and laws. So when I talk about first party data, we have seen and observed that all categories are utilizing this data in each form in a very tactful manner. So generally first party data was seen as a subset or a set of category of data, uh, which should be utilized for driving performance to find similar audiences who can give you better, closer signals. But we can really see and observe that even within branding campaigns, be it YouTube or OTT, brands are leveraging first party data to understand their audiences better and moving beyond matrix of CPM and reach. They're moving beyond matrix, which is which uh, goes to a quality matrix, which is time spent on a landing page or how many interactions had been done with a YouTube page. So as you've heard of Coda, so that methodology really helped in activating the subset. And hence we are seeing that first party data is not just a test environment anymore, but 2023 has been utilized very well by all advertisers in collection of the data and also doing a lot of sample tests. And we have seen that um, clients are moving also in segregation of this data at both a minute level and of course a scale. Second moving is omni-channel integration. So uh, omni-channel as we talk about, of course, it's like bringing all channels together. But we uh, always have been talking about a term called walled garden. And I think today we stand in a world where that really is not a problem or a challenge anymore. Because even if it's a world garden, so as you know that we have moved from data to more of technology-driven activation now, and now we only talk about our omni-channel, that how do we address a campaign in a managed frequency uh, using technology? So DSP, uh, uh, of course, plays a very bigger role there, and entire programmatic media is moving towards a very high-paced and advanced omni-channel approach. So, and we are really... Uh, I'll say aced it within our country and our industry when it comes to video advertising, which had really become omni-channel. We could club it all together. But now is the time when it's moving beyond. It's not just within a channel that you're trying to bring all inventories together, but that also moves to another channel. So this is a time when, and very soon I'll say, that our dream will come true, that will say, okay, my campaign budget, budget is, say, one crore, and let's start optimizing on reach. And we don't put money separately as per channel. And that totally depends on where audiences are available. So that clearly defines a lot of efficiency coming your way uh, automatically. And that really saves a lot of time because it's getting driven all by automation. Ads are being uh, shown to audiences, bases their availability on the channels, on the devices, and of course makes the life very easy, right? So when we talk about omni-channel integration, we can see that it's gonna uh, combine your audio, video, DOH, e-commerce, display and every any other channel that you can see coming in because all these channels have become completely programmatic. And third one is automation and efficiency. So when we talk about automation, clearly one word that really rings our head is artificial intelligence. And uh, generally when we are talking about our, to our clients and industry, we see that they connect artificial intelligence with uh, media activation only. 
But if you really look around, starting from your campaign planning, you have a lot of tools around, you know, which gives you very deeper insights and indexing. Moving to campaign activation, which of course, as you know, DSPs are there that helps you. But then we have also other tools which helps in optimizing your campaign. Very short example I'll put here. All of you, I'm sure you see a lot of ads every day. You don't notice it, but while you're seeing that ad, you're present in a particular location, right? You're uh, kind of browsing some kind of particular, I'll say, content. Uh, your handset, your browsing time, etc., etc. All these are just signals attached, threads attached to the one impression that you see. Now imagine when a campaign is being planned for billions of impressions, how many data strings will be attached? So it's impossible for a human eye to check those data sets uh, uh, physically by our eyes and make those changes every day. So then we have tools. So Group M's proprietary tool is what we call as Copilot. That's an AI tool that optimizes a campaign. And in many campaigns, we have seen over 1,700 changes also happening. And even CPMs or CTRs or any kind of metric that client really wants to go for, we have seen huge efficiencies coming in more than 20% also, even touching 30% for many brands. So that's the kind of savings that these AI tools are driving for us and really saving a lot of time because it's all happening in real time. But when we also move beyond uh, media activation comes results. And every advertiser says that, okay, I've done a campaign in an omni-channel environment, integration happened, automation uh, really has done a lot of efficient, uh, efficient deliveries for us. But what more, how do I plan my next campaign? What are the detailed insights about that? So we have a lot of measurement tools available which are being uh, used, uh, completely all tests done, where we can see what is the frequency overlap between two partners. So as you know, ADH is one of the prime tools used for that, which is around data, insight, and mining uh, is owned by Google. But that really helps you understand that what kind of frequency should you be optimizing at, what kind of overlaps are there, what kind of audiences are available on which platform, and many more. So. When we talk about automation efficiency, that really covers entire loop for you, starting from planning to understanding audiences. And even when we talk about creative aspect, so DCO is a word where when we talk about uh, DCO, you will see many people saying that DCO is not something new. It's very old. Absolutely, it's old. Uh, we have been hearing about DCO maybe ever since 2014. First campaigns started maybe in 2012 or 2013. But it's not same DCO. DCO that we talk about today, of course, that's, so for everybody's knowledge, uh, DCO would be dynamic creative optimization. But that's not, not just about dynamic creative optimization. DCO today has to do a lot with automation, data, not just uh, different communication being shown, but different creative asset also. So with the help of DCO, you can really enable an audience, maybe who's near to a physical store, so the creative shown to them can actually talk about an add to cart or go to a nearby store where you click on the button and a map can open up. And you can really, that map will navigate you to the nearest store because that audience is closer to the physical store. But maybe somebody is really away from the physical store for that human being. Uh, the creative can really talk about add to cart. So once you click on it, action will take you to e-commerce page. So depending on campaign objective, even with the same campaign objective, but depending on audience availability and their reach, creative optimization can be done beyond just communication and comments and also can be moving uh, towards different creative assets and aspects. And also, uh, not to miss, as we always know that, when we talk about automation in DCO, that also moves beyond uh, many activations like triggers. So for an example, you're running an ad, say, for an AC. It could be different from a Bombay region versus a Delhi region. If it's raining somewhere, it could talk about humidity at the same time using trigger of weather. And if it's really hot, say, out in Delhi, it can talk about lowest temperature control uh, features. Just basis trigger, you can show two different ads to different people, not just to many more. Moving to the next one, and I'm sorry if I really went fast uh, in lieu of time, uh, which is programmatic media maturity. I'll say please watch out for this in entire 2024, 20, because programmatic media is really maturing at a very high pace. So when you talk about uh, unlocking potential that clearly sits in what video, and I say that video still has a lot of scope to grow uh, because when we talk about video now, it's not just about digital landscape, but we're seeing that how video can become integrated with your offline planning. So when you're planning your campaign, how with the offline TV campaign, how do you really see that beyond which curve your incremental reach can be fulfilled by digital programmatically, driving better cost per reach for you 
and not having an overlap with your TV ads. So we've really reached that stage and it's time to go beyond that. Followed by navigating the programmatic audio frontier. So as we always know that, yes, audio uh, had been launched in India quite many years ago, but I still see that we haven't reached the full potential of audio. We haven't utilized that in terms of advertising. There's so much that can be done in audio, uh, like voice ads, where with the help of a voice, we are talking back to it. We remember almost like two, three years ago at Group M, we had done this test for Pizza Hut using uh, a partners uh, for automation of the ad where a user could, could talk to an ad. So while driving, uh, that ad was talking to a user that, hey, it's a one plus one BOGO offer today for uh, pizza. Would you want me to place an order for you? And user could talk back to it. So that really cuts the journey for you in terms of opening up a landing page, checking which pizza to order for you. So those kind of automations can really change the game for you. Which means that even in that similar branding campaign, you can start driving conversions and activations and engagements. And I feel this is where we should be always thinking that uh, we should be moving our approach in a thought which is always objective driven, which is always outcome driven. Eventually, what is it that we want to achieve? And then we should be mapping it back. Third one is, of course, era of media commerce. Uh, when we talk about commerce, few big names come to our head because we only think about uh, just, you know, okay, that commerce is just about buying online. But don't we feel that everything that we do, our entire life revolves around commerce? be it buying an insurance, be it even now taking a checkup by a doctor online. That's a world of commerce. Booking uh, a slot, a consultation slot at a hospital goes via some commerce apps, buying medicines, um, calling for a house cleaning, etc. Everything in your life at some point of time is connecting back to a commerce platform itself, even at buying a grocery, even at anything else, anything that you can even think of, right? So when we talk about commerce, it's not just about some e-com platforms, but anything wherever uh, the intent of a user is to do a purchase eventually is a commerce platform. So when we look around and we know that our life really revolves around entire commerce platforms, so it's really an era of media commerce where I say media commerce to become a whole channel in itself. Right now it's a very nascent stage which is revolving more around search and SEO concept based media activation. But uh, we have already act, uh, entered uh, a commerce world where you're able to target audiences beyond commerce using data signals. But again, very soon, we are able to see that moving towards automation and also advancement in terms of a lot of AI activation, creative optimizations, and many more. Just to share an update, so in one of the global markets at uh, Group M and Zaxxis, we've already activated Copilot on Amazon. So even within Amazon world, AI works, where campaign works towards the objective and the goal of conversion or engagement or whichever may suits as per the brand requirements. So that's the, really the era of media commerce, which of course in India also we see that happening very soon, where uh, commerce world will also be integrated with a lot of AI, creative aspect, and automation, driving of course efficiency for you. And the last one, let's redefine visibility, because when we talk about uh, DOH, and especially this uh, state and Bombay, we see a lot of uh, DOH ads around, and also regular uh, OH ads around. But if you really uh, go back to any developed country, you can see a lot of uh, engagements happening in those DOH screens. A 3D DOH, uh, real-time communication gets changed, right? Although that, all of that is PDOH. So similarly, when we talk about out-of-home screens, it has got huge scope. The screen behind me is a DOH screen in a way, right? Now, what you really do with it when you connect it to a programmatic world is when you unlock all the avenues for it. You unlock the possibility of creative aspect. You unlock the possibility of playing with technology, integrating technology across DSPs, SSPs, creative, measurement. All of that comes into real play. How do you take back an audience uh, connect engagement to your campaign objective? A very small example I would like to uh, just talk about. I'll not name the brand, but uh, this brand really wanted to uh, talk about uh, women's security and safety uh, within especially domestic world. So they had uh, planned a campaign where on a screen they showed a woman with all bruises on her face and they were talking about how uh, domestic violence should not be tolerated and it really needs a lot of attention by people. With the help of DOH, what they had done, uh, every person looking at that screen, and we had a camera on top and that could really read your face, right? So every person looking at that screen, video moves. And when that video moves, so the first screen of that woman who's full of bruises turns to a woman frame by frame, 
uh, in a very happy, vibrant kind of a face, right? Like all decked up properly, beautiful woman. And at the end, communication came that every person who's looking at me is helping me and get coming out of uh, this environment. So just with the help of technology, and of course a lot of creative concept around it, with the help of DCO within PDOH, such a beautiful campaign could be made. So there's many mock such campaigns that you can plan, which can drive engagement for you, which can really leave an impact on your audiences. So we'll see that how dynamics of uh, DOH is going to change in coming days and world with the help of programmatic. And of course, many of it uh, could sound uh, very unrealistic to you. So to support that, we have case studies also in this report, which uh, really you know, stands for the points that how we have done these tests already and they're successful tests with us. So as you know, that Group M really stands for innovation at the same time. And every uh, case study that we talk about uh, runs within programmatically, which is uh, covering all the aspects, which could be DOH, video, automation, creative uh, optimization, etc., and many more. If you have any further doubts or queries for me, uh, I'm right here with you guys, and you can just connect with me here. And I really hope that you enjoy reading the report. Thank you.